Hey, sorry, so, uh, it always seems like this time of the year you just come on. I mean, you, you, scored, you scored a lot of goals in the section round last, you know, two weeks ago, and then I mean, looking at your career already, like you scored so many goals in the NCAA. What is it about this time that you just seem to turn it on? That is a good question. <laughs> I wish I had a good answer for you, Matt, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's just a sense of urgency. Um, we try and play every game the same, at the same level, with the same intensity, but still something inside me just lights up once, you know, if, if you lose this game, you go home. If you win, you move on. Just the live or die kind of game. So I guess... Maybe it's 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 that thought in my head that uh, you know somebody's got to put the ball away and scratch and claw and and I've been fortunate to you know put myself in some good positions over the years and have some tapping goals. <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. I mean, you know, there's a reason Wisconsin Oshkosh is <clears throat> has the record that they do. But they're very talented. Um, you know, their their back four were technical and can open up and spread out, and so it made it difficult for us to be able to pressure them. But they could, um, they, they possess the ball well. Um, they move the ball and and created a number of very good scoring opportunities. Should have been 2-2 two -two at the half, um, except for, you know, a, a save off the goal line from Jordan Sands. So, you know, I, they, uh, I was surprised with, you know, how much they subbed at, uh, at the first half. And, and uh, you know, they played with a lot of depth throughout the game. Yeah, I mean, you said at first that 4-1 doesn't, it's not fair to them. Um, you know, I think the number of shots we had, you know, 18-10, that's a pretty close game. They had a lot of scoring opportunities. And for us to get a couple counter goals at the end isn't isn't fair for the quality of, of team they are and, and the level with which they can play. You know, and goodness gracious, 17, that guy was a handful. I don't know how many shots he had. He had a shot, you know. He's a very good player. He checked back into the midfield. He could run out of the middle. He's a good player. Uh, Danny, their coach and their players talk about cramping up. I think it was a little bit of a factor for sure. Definitely in the first half, I, f I felt it. I, I was cramping up a little bit, just trying to battle through it, get to halftime. Um, but I think our, our depth was huge on a day like this. And, and likewise, they played with a lot of depth. Um, second half felt a lot better. Um, started off maybe a little bit slow, a little bit stagnant, but our second group came in and picked us up huge, and, and they were moving the ball and, and wearing those guys out. So the last 15 minutes when our starters came back in, we were ready to go, we were fresh, and, and I think that was a huge factor. So a lot of credit to our second group for picking us up. Coach, did you feel... Yeah. There were times that we played well. Um, you know, when you play better competition, small mistakes, you know, become big mistakes. And um, when we would give the ball away against an average opponent, we just went it back. But to give the ball away against Oshkosh, they made us pay a price, and they maintained possession for a while. Um, I don't, I don't know if necessarily he's he's been able to to make that play in the past. Um, I mean, I think Jordan has come a long way. 
You know, he's a junior, he's an important player for us. Uh, last year, he didn't play a lot, but had to step in and play 90 minutes in the national championship game. And he's uh, maintained that momentum, um, you know, this year. And he, he did a great job. I mean, I, I think, you know, they had, they had an opportunity even earlier when um, they had a guy that received the ball back post wide open. All they had to do was knock it in, and Tom Ranko slid in and, and um, you know, was able to make the save. I think it has more to do with uh, our players' willingness to continue to work hard, not give up on a play, and, and fight and battle, and our fitness level. I, I didn't think they were going to get tired in the second half. Um, but I thought I thought they did. I thought it was hard for them as the game wore on. And as strange as this sounds, I, I thought the wind had an impact. They were able to get behind us in the first half because they would play a long ball and they and they would um, they would be able to you know get behind our back floor because of that. In the second half, it's just a little bit harder because when we would have them penned in wasn't as easy for them to clear out. I don't know. I've never seen him play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coach, right off the bat, and, and, and Danny as well, uh, they, they had quite a, quite a few chances. Uh, maybe not sure you're scoring for us, but uh, just getting by the defense on occasion. Um, Stally getting some good through balls. What were your emotions? I mean, that was when? At the beginning of the game? Yeah. I mean, I thought it was what I expected. I mean, I, I thought it was going to be a game that was end-to-end. -end. I thought it was two teams that played very similar styles. And, you know, I thought it was going to be a high-scoring game. When we, when we scored the first goal, my assistant leaned over and said, that's not going to be the last goal scored in this game. And, you know, I... I believe that you know we do well as the game goes on, and and that was true today. Um, if you could, uh, what, in your opinion, what what was Tom Rankin's effect on in the first half? It seemed as though like, he really did a good job to sell the ball really wide, spread it out, and maintain position. You guys kept coming on on his play. I mean, you know. In, in, in hindsight, even, even to, um, two weekends ago, the sectional championship, I think I think Tom was critical to us in regard to being that bit of a midfield sweeper and, and not only offensively help us spray the ball, but defensively he made a lot of good plays last weekend and, and he did the same thing today. Um, you know, we need guys that can play. And we ask all of our guys to play <clears throat> on both sides of the ball, both, you know, Offensively and defensively, whether they're a back or whether they're a forward, you got to do both well on the side. That was uh, my next question. Um, do you think that in the end, uh, it seems so, you guys played 11 man defense, not being behind the ball, just everyone working back? Do you think that was a major mistake in the end? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think our defending has improved over the over this season. Like we struggled at the beginning of the year. Um, was disappointed to to give up a goal, but based on the quality of our opponent, I'm glad it was only one. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, our wings open up opportunities in the middle, and we get the ball in the middle, it opens up opportunities in the wing. And so, you know, we, we practice effective wing play a lot. And D Black is, is very talented in, in regard to his pace. And Kent Ramirez is, is very talented in regard to um, his ball control and ability to break someone down 1v1. And, you know, that's important to us.
Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, I mean we heard we heard a lot about the outside backs for Oshkosh and their ability to get into the attack. And so we talked to our wings like you're going to have to play on both sides of the ball. But that's a dangerous game to play. Um, and you know sometimes that has an impact. You know that that, that goes back to who has the ball. If, if they have the ball, it's 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 hard on us. You know if their backs are coming, but the back goes and they lose the ball and we have the ball in transition. It's hard on them. Um, you know I don't know if their outside backs had a lot of help. It was a lot of one v one. Sometimes a second defender would come, but um, you know there was sometimes it was a bit of an island for their outside backs, and that's hard. Dan, you guys the last season. You're different uh, emotionally. Yeah. And in regards to that, how has your experience year after year impacted what you guys do? I think it gets more difficult um, year after year. Obviously, to repeat once is a pretty difficult challenge, but to do it three years in a row is, you know, it jumps up even, even more in the difficulty level. Um, it's it's really difficult when you've been so successful to fall into a sense of uh, complacency and just a false sense of security. So this season, especially this Final Four, you know everything's familiar. We played on this field. We won on this field last year. So we can't expect that we're just going to walk out there and the same result is going to happen this year we have to go out there and earn it and um, so just battling that that false sense of security and um, we talk a lot about being the aggressor on the field and and uh, going at teams not just sitting back and and hoping that we win the game just because we have however many stars above our crest um, so it's I mean it's it's a huge challenge every year and and I think this year is even more difficult than last year.